everybody. How y'all doing today? God is good. He's a wonderful guy. He is the Alpha. <laughs> He's the Omega. He is the beginning and the ending. When we have nothing else, when we have no one else, we lean on His Word. When we have no strength, we lean on His understanding. When we have no power, we thank be to God that He is greater in us <laughs> than anything in this world. When anything comes at us, we need to know and be sure knowing that God has given us joy. And if He has given us joy, no man can take it from us. We have the authority to do right react correctly and we have the authority to do wrong and stray from the word of God come on glory be to God glory be to God and I say glory be to God thank be to God that he has given us this life more abundantly <laughs> I thank God that he just continues to refresh me in his soul <laughs> Now that is mine, what is his? You see, I don't own myself. I'm not in control of me. It's God that's in control of me. He owns my body. Okay. Ephesians chapter 2. And you hath he quickened, who were dead in trespasses and sins, Wherein in time past ye walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of, of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in time past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling desi the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, hath he quickened us together in Christ, with Christ. By grace he are saved, and hath raised us up together, and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come he might shew the exceeding riches of his grace in his kingdom toward in his kindness toward us through Christ Jesus for by grace ye are saved through faith and that not of yourselves and it is the gift of God not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus under good works which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Wherefore remember. That ye being in time past. Gentiles in the flesh. Who are called uncircumcision. By that which is called the circumcision. In the flesh. Made by hands. That at that time ye were without Christ. Being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel. And strangers from the covenants of his promise. Having no hope and without God in this world. But now in Christ Jesus, ye, who sometimes were far off, are made nigh by the blood of Christ, for he is our peace, who hath both made both one, and hath broken down the middle wall of partition between us, having abolished in his flesh the enmity, even the law of commandments contained in ordinances, for to make in himself of twain one new man, so making peace. And that he might reconcile both unto God in one body by the cross, having slain the enmity thereby, and came and preached peace to you, which were afar off, and to them that were nigh. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. That's the spirit of truth the spirit of life, 
the spirit of mercy, the spirit of peace. This is all one spirit. The spirit of understanding. He is wisdom. He is our hope. He's our eternal salvation. He is the word. For through him we both have access by one spirit unto the Father. Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone, in whom all the building fitly framed together, groweth unto an holy temple unto the Lord. So our bodies are to be made a holy temple. We say, but we think we know what holy is. Most think that they know what holy is. But if we do not know who Christ is, if we do not know the life that he has lived, then we, know, we don't know what holy is. In whom all the building fitly framed together groweth unto an holy temple in the Lord, in whom ye also are builded together for the habitation of God through the Spirit. And so if we want to know what holy is, we need to learn more about Christ and how he is and who he is, how he's reacted towards things. We need to learn more about charity. We need to go into the word of God and understand all these wonderful things that he tries to explain to us. You know, he tells us, he said, be slow to speak, slow to anger. See, these things we have to actually put into place. See, we have, now that we are saved, those who are saved now, not saying all, have accepted his grace. But those who have accepted His grace, if you and I have accepted His grace, then we have the power. The same power He had as He was on the mountain and the devil tempted Him. But He overcame temptation and chose something greater. The same power That he has, he, he has given us. We're royalty in his eyes. We are his brothers and sisters sitting high above this world. Above all the principalities in this world. Because he said he put it under his feet. And we are sitting right next to him. So if it is under his feet, then it is under ours also. Now, who are we to take our arms and reach down and say, pull me under? We have the power to be not conformed back into that down there. As we left it behind, it's not of us. It left because it was never a part of us. As Christ come into us, he said, you were chosen. You were chosen before you were even in your mother's womb. I created you a holy living temple before you even knew life in its own. Before you opened your eyes. Before you heard a sound. As I spoke. Life in this world. I spoke you. Into life. Mm. Dear Heavenly Father God. We thank you Lord Jesus. For your Holy Spirit. For your understanding. For your touch Lord Jesus. Oh glory be to God. Thank you Father God. We thank you that you have given us life, the power to
to overcome death. Not that we should boast in this power, but that we know we have this power to not choose what the flesh once was, but rather to seek something higher, a higher calling. And to stay on this right path that you've laid before us. But Father God, we ask you that you give us the desire to come into your word. That your word, this entire word that you give us, the understanding that your wisdom, Father God, may be in us. That it may increase your word. That we can only think upon your word. Forget the things of the world, but yet remember this heavenly gift that you've given us, Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, especially in the time of temptation. This we pray in your mighty, holy, precious name, Yahweh. Yeah, (laughs) Yahweh. Oh, glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, Yahweh, Yahusha. (laughs) Glory be to God. There are so many names. Hosanna. (laughs) Hosanna in the highest. We got Jehovah. He's our provider. He's our gyra. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When I think upon the Lord, my heart, it's like it's doing its own dance and tune. <laughs> because, you see, as I think upon the Lord, I remember all the things He's brought me. Even when it was just thinking upon his word. And sometimes, you know, there was many of times, yeah, I'm sure I reacted the wrong way. But yeah, there was a whole bunch of times that I remember that I was able to have the power to choose to do right. And I did. Now, that, that itself was a miracle all by its own. <laughs> that plus... All the miracles he's done. Do you know that God has uh, delivered me of smoking cigarettes a couple years ago? He delivered me of smoking weed, methamphetamines. Uh, He delivered me out of a life of drugs. And, you know, I I did that spice stuff, you know, K2, whatever you want to call it. Um, I used to be a thief. I used to be a gangbanger. Uh, before I before I began to read the Word of God, I was uh, I couldn't retain what I read, no less understand what I read. They consider me schizophrenic, bipolar. I had anxiety, asthma. Man, I was just straight up screwed up. <laughs> and God picked some something or someone or whatever you want to call me. Someone like me. I had the worst anger issues. No trust for nothing. No one. God chose me. Oh, he chose you too. But you see, right now, I'm just thinking on the light that God gave me. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling grateful. I'm feeling so grateful because he chose a man that had schizophrenia. That was seeing things, hearing things. He chose a man with bipolar anxiety. He chose a man that couldn't understand how <laughs> what he read. No less even remembered what he read. He chose a man... That smoked weed. 
that had some of the most horrible thoughts in his mind to do. He chose me. He chose you too. I don't know what you've been through, but you want to know something? Can't nobody tell it like you can tell it. What he's done for you. What he's done for you. What he's done for you. Can't nobody tell it like you can tell it. What he's done for you. So lay it down. Lay it down. Put it in the comment section. What God has done for you. What miracles. What did God bring you out of. What is your testimony today? Maybe you could help somebody else. There's somebody out there watching this video right now that don't know. Don't know don't know who he is first and foremost or maybe they know who he is, but they don't have enough faith. They're like, man, I'm just a nobody. You know, I was that person. <laughs> I didn't believe that God would choose some, choose me. Man, I'm out there doing the dog stuff, you know. I'm out there gang banging and, you know, doing drugs and dealing drugs and stealing and robbing things and such. Why would God choose me? This is what I was thinking. Why would why would he choose me? No God, God ain't. And, and even if he did choose me, then um, who's gonna listen to me? I'm out here doing all this stuff. Who's gonna listen to an illiterate person? Oh, he don't know what he's talking about. He ain't even he ain't even smart enough to have a GED or diploma. Right? This is what was going on in my head. I don't know if it was coming out their mouth, <laughs> but it was going on in my head, that's for sure. Man, I, I come to the Word of God and I, I became so judgmental, you know, because I guess because of my, my, my unbelief in thinking that God would take somebody like me and <laughs> shape him up into something better than I was. So I, I, you know, instead of working on me, instead of learning the Word of God enough to work on me, I learned the Word of God to try to uh, try to work on somebody else instead of me. <laughs> Come on. So I go around telling people they flaws and all this and that. Not knowing this whole time, he tells me right here, look, all I had to do is keep reading and start implying it for myself. I'm going to read you something. Today, well, I've read it a few times. I'm sure of it. I'm sure y'all, yeah, y'all been here. I've been on the same, same things over and over and over. Just because I want people to know, I want them to know what I know. I want them to experience what I've experienced. You know, not not in the hardships, really. I mean, but truth of the matter is, is the hardships. Were the, more of a blessing than the good things, you know. You know, I I got a roof over my head, a house, a, a vehicle now, a, a job, and everything. These are all blessings, great, awesome, cool. But you know what? The real blessing was that struggle that 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 got me there. That was the real blessing, the struggle that got me there. <laughs> I don't know if y'all understand what I'm saying, but I'm 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 putting it down the right way. <laughs> now he said right here in first in Titus chapter one, verse fifteen, he tells us, he says, "Unto the pure, all things are pure." 
But unto them that are defiled and unbelieving is nothing pure. But even their mind and conscience is defiled. They profess that they know God. But in works. Hmm. Now, what are we to do? We are to lay down the works of the devil, right? And pick up the works of righteousness. Our Father God, he, his workmanship upon us gives us a new work. So, we can't have half and half. Oh, I'm going to have half of the works of the devil and half of the works of Christ, you know. You just can't do it. It don't work that way. He says, they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. In works they deny him. They denied him in the work that they done. And you say, what do you mean by works? Well, what I mean by works is you know, a, a work can just be from your mouth alone. A work can be the way you treat somebody, the way you react to somebody a work can be uh, a, 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 an ungodly thought. A work can be wrong intentions in your heart. You know, your mind plays tricks on you. You say, oh, I want to do this for this person. And I, I want to do good unto them and this and that. I, I want to do it for the gospel's sake. But yet, truthfully, in your heart, your heart's desire is something totally different. Because your flesh is telling you, hey, you, do, you go ahead and use this for an excuse. But you know what I want, right? Hmm. Okay. Alright, so he says, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient and unto every good work reprobate. Wow, some strong words there. Some very, very, very strong words there. So in, in uh, Ephesians chapter 5, he says, in verse 24. Now we'll start in verse 22. That ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. He said, and ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man. Which is corrupt according to the deceitful lusts. Ooh. To be in deceit is to believe and feel as if you are doing right, but yet you are actually doing wrong. You have you, you, you have been deceived by your lust that you are doing rightful deeds, rightful works, but the truth Shows that the works is corrupt. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. The spirit of your mind. That's the word of God. The word of God should. You should have the word of God so much embedded into your heart. Nonetheless in your mind. That you can renew it. Every day. Renew it. That means you don't have the same old thoughts. But you have a new thought. Okay, at one point in time, I would be angry. But he says here, be angry. Uh, he, he, at one point in time, I'd be angry and I'd react quickly. He says, be ye angry and sin not. That means hold it. Hold back. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. So, don't give up your grace. Don't give up Jesus. 
Don't give up the light that is in you as your anger arises. Hmm. Neither give place to the devil. So, as you know, we have the authority, right? So don't allow the devil to have his place back. As it was never his. But he has deceived us since we were childs. Deceives our parents, 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 parents. And it just kept coming on and on and on. And we grew from uh, an iniquity of sin into the works of sin. Hmm. Whoa. Neither give place to the devil. Let him that stole steal no more. But rather let him labor. Working with his hands. The thing which is good. That he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. But that which is good. To the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers, and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Let all bitterness, and wrath, and anger, and clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice, and be ye kind one to another, tender hearted, forgiving one another, even as. God, for Christ's sake, have forgiven you. And that is how we are to not grieve the Holy Spirit. You see, we grieve our own Holy Spirit. Can't nobody grieve your Holy Spirit. You see, there was a song that I used to listen, uh, I, I used to hear, it says, Tempted by the fruit of another. You see, the temptation from another's fruit can happen, yes. Hmm. From the fruit of another. Hmm. But. It is our choice. Whether we have. Bitterness. And wrath. And anger. And clamor. And evil speaking. Or. We be kind to one another. Tender hearted. Forgiving one another. Even as God. For Christ's sake hath forgiven us. Hmm. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your understanding. Thank you for your word, Father God. I thank you, Father God, that you come in the right time and ooh, with the right <laughs> correction that we are your children, that you chastise us. That you direct us in a rightful way. If only we lean on to you. If only we humble ourselves and accept that we're not in control. Now, we're going to do one last chapter because. I have it on my heart that somebody out there needs this word, if not just me. I know I need every word that has been spoken, thank be to God. He is just, he's talking to me. Everybody says, I pray, I pray, and I pray. All the time I pray, and he does not answer me. I can't hear him. So my question is, is do you read the word of God? When you pray, do you open the Bible? Lots of us will say, yeah, I've opened up the Bible and I read, I read, and I just can't. I, I. For one, I don't understand it. And for two, he said, he tells us he, we, we have to come without the flesh. But in spirit, 
What's the Spirit of God? The Spirit of God is love. What is love? Okay, so first off, before we want to hear God, we want to get answers for our questions. Before, he said that we cannot get to the kingdom of heaven. We can't get to our Father God, lest it be through Christ Jesus. So, before we want to get these answers, we must learn of Christ Jesus and what love is, who love is. We must learn love. Because right now, before we come into Christ Jesus, before we come to know Christ Jesus, we only know lust. And a lot of us has gotten it twisted thinking lust is love. A lot of us got it twisted thinking that God is judgmental. He says, my judgment is right when I judge. He said, yeah. If you are in sin, or if you're of this world, yeah, you'll perish in the end. You'll be judged by your own deeds and everything. But for those who come to Christ, they are made free. That means you lay down your life, you lay down your old ways and everything. You lay it all down, give it to Him, believe on the Son of Christ, uh, the, son, the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, mm, the Son of our Father God. We believe on him. The things that he's done. Knowing that he died. Defeated death. And rose again. So that. Th knowing this. We're, we're like okay. He's in us. <laughs> it gives us hope. Thinking okay. That means we can have life. We can defeat death too. So much so that. We ain't got to worry. We ain't got to think on things. We. Everything's covered. Let's, let's go into the last chapter. Who glory be to God. Romans chapter 10, verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Hmm. For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God. A zeal of God. God is merciful. He's kind. Oh, we, we'll go into it here in a minute. Right now, actually. I'm going to go right quick. That way we'll understand. 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 4. God suffers long. This is love. Oh, first, let me go and show you something. I'm going to show you something real quick so you'll understand why I'm saying God instead of charity. And First John, chapter 4, verse 8. You see that? Verse 8. He that loveth not... No. And he said, He that loveth not knoweth not God, for God is love. For God is love. Charity is love also. Okay? So, as we know this, that 